Well, we're now at the Wellspun Energy Office in Noida, and I'm joined by two very special experts. First up, on my left, is Mr. Harshwandan Rungta, who's a certified financial planner at Rungta Securities. And we also have Mr. Firoz Aziz, who's a director at Anand Rathi Private Wealth. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Firoz, my first question to you. Before we start talking investing and financial planning, tell me a little bit about the basic mistakes, the common pitfalls that people make usually when getting into investing. Now, when you speak about pitfalls and ground rules, there are quite a few ground rules which need to be taken care of before you start investing. Predominantly, I would like to abbreviate those ground, ground rules so that you can remember them because as human beings, we tend to remember only 1% of what we hear. So I'll abbreviate it for you. I call it the smart way of investing. So I'll tell you what each alphabet stands for very briefly. Segregate your investments and your other insurance needs. This is the common, most common mistake when people start investing. So that's called uh, segregating them. If you segregate those investments, you will almost end up saving your first year's premium in the first five years of you paying. So segregate your investments. Don't try to meet two objectives with one rupee invested. That's the most important thing. The second thing, which is M, M, M stands for measuring your risks. People are so focused on return that they don't forget uh, measuring risks. Because return is going to be dependent on external factor. Risk is the only variable which you can choose to take, right? The return is going to be market dependent. The third point, which is called asset allocation, right? The, the A stands for asset allocation. People end up spending maximum time on seeing what security to buy, which stock to buy, which mutual fund to buy. Forgetting that asset allocation, which asset to buy, how much, that's very important. Because that will dictate 90% of your returns in the future, not what you buy how much asset of which quantity you buy. Then R stands for, uh, again, a very important thing. When people try to do their financial planning, they end up s confusing between responsibilities and goals. If you ask him, what do you want to save for an individual? He says, I want to save for my kid's education, for my first home. All those are responsibilities, not your goals. Responsibilities are a subset of goals. Goals have to be more dream-oriented. And the last bit, which is T, T stands for tax efficiency. Like we've always heard, there's no free lunch. This is the only free lunch, tax efficiency. You can't miss this one. Harsh, what are your uh, views on this? What, uh, what is your take on the common pitfalls? Well, uh, since we've already, uh, he's taken the technical aspects of the investments, I'd like to take a little bit on the behavioral part of uh, you know, your aspects when you start investing. Since it's a very young crowd, uh, you'd be very keen to know how do you get started? What are the things that you should be very careful about? So let me take on the behavioral part. The first thing that I would advise is that you need to be really, you know, wary about a one size fits all syndrome. We're talking about personal finance. Remember the word is personal finance. Very often we've seen that people in your age group tend to fall to this uh, system. My friend has bought a particular product. My relatives have bought a particular thing. My colleagues have bought this. So it must be good and I should buy it. So we've commonly heard. Uh, you know, one particular policy, my friend has invested in this policy, all of us go and buy the similar policy. So when we talk about personal finance, each person has a unique, you know, set of requirements to himself. The circumstances are different for each individual. You need to make sure that you do not fall to this one size fits all syndrome. That's the first thing. The second thing is you need to set a goal. We've spoken about uh, the responsibilities and goals, so I do not want to go much into the details. But I'm only going to try and give you an example. You leave your house to go somewhere, and you leave your house to come to office. There is a difference. You need to foresee, you need to identify what do you want to do out of the savings that you're, uh, the, the investments that you're going to make. So there has to be a set of goals. You need to really and clearly know wh what are you going to save for. It could be as simple as a wealth creation. I'm not saying you need to have something specifically for a particular cause. But there has to be some goal and some timeline to it. Firuz, you know, these guys are young professionals. They are just newly started investing. Some might, might have just started or some have been investing for a few years. Why should they invest now? Why can't, th these are the heydays. Why can't we just go out, party, watch a lot of movies, travel a lot and investing, fine, I'll do it when I reach 40 or later on. You know, why now? Very valid question. Every, everybody actually uh, tries to defer uh, their investment plan and their personal finance, like, like uh, Harsh rightly men mentioned that goal setting is very critical. And doing it sooner is so important. Let me take an example maybe to tell you what is the impact of starting early. 
okay, uh, not even getting to 40s, if you defer your investment by five years, what is going to happen to your maturity value? Let's assume 10,000 rupees per month if somebody invests on a monthly basis for the next 25 years. His 10,000 rupees, if at, it's grown at the rate of 13%, will become 2.2 crores. But if he said, instead of starting five years later, I'll start today and have 30 years to invest, the 2.2 crores will become 4.5 crores. By deferring it for five years, you have reduced your maturity value by half. So every year you are actually losing out on, on substantial portions of your maturity value. So starting early, not, 40 is really late. I would say the day, the day you start working, you should start saving. I know, of course, uh, you would want to spend the money because you've been waiting to start earning. But yeah, it's very difficult. I know it's easier said than done, but I think you should try and uh, do that. So that's a large impact on maturity value. You can't okay. let go of it. Okay, interesting. Harsha, I want to tell me a little bit about um, asset allocation, diversification. Now, generally there is a trend, again, young professionals, we're working very hard. We put in 12, 12, 14, 14 hour days. At the end of the day, you just want to go home and rest. You might not have time to, uh, you know, look at your investments so much. So just a couple of points. How can they go about uh, getting a good uh, diversification, a good asset allocation? Uh, well, the first thing when you begin, you need to, as we've already spoken about asset allocation, we've spoken about risk profiling. You understand, you, you consult a professional who could help you, uh, you know, decide what is your risk profile and how much would you go, how much would you put into equities, how much into debt, how much into uh, precious metals, how much into real estate. Okay, so the first thing is you identify that class, asset class and a percentage allocation to that particular asset class. I'll give you an example. Thumb rules, uh, though we don't believe very, uh, you know, aggressively into thumb rules, but just for the sake of a general audience, whatever is your age, that much money goes into debt. So if you are 30 years of age, 30% of your investable surplus should go into debt. Okay. Now within debt, what products do you use? There are FDs, there are debt mutual funds, there are bonds, all those fit under debt segment. Now you have equities. We spoke about equities, a very hot topic at all times. All people who even do not invest into equities attract the stock markets. Okay, so, so what about equities? You have options to invest directly into equities. You have an option if you do not understand, you do not have the time to research on individual companies, you choose the mutual fund route. Mutual funds will have different kind of schemes with different themes, different objectives. You can choose the kind of objective that fits into your risk profile and invest into it. If you do not understand anything at all and you want to participate in the growth of the economy and you want to participate in, uh, in the equity markets, Nifty is one example. You invest into a Nifty, you get a basket of 50 stocks to start with and you and if, uh, it's easy to track as well. Every day at the end of the day, I mean, you can just simply look at what the Nifty has performed and you will know whether your fund has gone up or gone down. More of that on NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. Don't go anywhere. We're going for a short break. Stay tuned.